obviously Tuesday was the Michigan primary, so uh, we're going to put this up on the screen. Once again, Joe Biden finishing obviously far and away the winner with 81% uh, of the vote, but with 13.2% of the vote and over 100,000 raw votes, the uncommitted did have a strong showing. Now, Joe Biden won the 2020 general uh, count in Michigan by about 154,000 votes, so I would have liked to have seen this rank at uh, more close to the 150,000 vote number. Uh, but 100 uh, is still an impressive showing, uh, no doubt. And it was impressive enough to cause some cope uh, in the liberal media outlets. So let's first go to MSNBC, where Claire McCaskill chimed in on the results of this. Also, Chris, we have to remember, I mean, let's look at the Ann Arbor numbers. Joe Biden didn't win Ann Arbor. Bernie Sanders won. As we won call him right here, yeah. Yeah. So the witch from Hansel and Gretel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But also, Chris, we have to remember, I mean, let's look at the Ann Arbor numbers. Joe Biden didn't win Ann Arbor. Bernie Sanders won Ann Arbor. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. some I mean, of these areas children. have never been yeah. Biden country. Yeah. They have That's been really many more people that were further left and yeah. didn't like the idea of a moderate yeah. carrying the flag of our party. Yeah. If you're the oh, so now all of a sudden it's not anything to worry about that the progressives and the Bernie people didn't fall in line behind Joe Biden. Now all of a sudden, well, hey, look, they're not our people anyway. In 2016, when they lost Michigan, oh my God, it was Jill Stein's fault. Those Bernie people defected to Jill Stein. How dare they? How dare they? Now it's primary. Hey, you know, look, I mean, they're not really our voters anyway. Could that be because they trust that some of them will fall in line since some of this uncommitted campaign was organized by the likes of like Rashida Tlaib and Michael Moore, who are still going to encourage people to vote blue in November? But of course, the people who started this uncommitted campaign were the abandoned Biden people. Those were Arab and Muslim uh, leaders in Michigan who are determined to see this strategy through to the general election. So we'll see. Maybe they'll be singing a different tune come then. But let's play the rest of this. The Democrat, if you're the elites of the Democratic Party, if you're the Biden White House, how concerned are you really about this faction of uncommitted voters staying home in November? Well, I think th there's a danger on both sides here that people are going to stay home. I think you've got yeah. traditional Republicans yep. that w no way they will vote for Joe Biden and no way they will vote for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some people that are going to hold their nose and vote. And then there's going to be people that just stay home. Yeah. The question is, will the Biden campaign be able and by the way, there are no elites in our party. Alex. Yes, sorry. No elites. Uh, exist, no elites I know you didn't party. mean That's that. Right. That doesn't exist. But I, the question is, can Biden draw the kind of contrast around some issues like guns and abortion and, frankly, autocracy? Yeah. And what Trump, what Trump is saying he's going to do. Yeah. I mean, he's going to tear up dictator every on day one. Well, dictator on day one. And there's there you go. There you go. So there's the first bit. I, I, I can't take that much stupid this early in the morning, man. Well, we're going to break you're it up. You're harshing my mellow, Keaton. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to break it up a little bit because I did want to mix this in. Uh, because even though, obviously, statewide, the uncommitted was never going to win outright, the uncommitted campaign did actually outvote Joe Biden in the center of this effort, which is Dearborn, Michigan, obviously the largest Arab population in the state by far, where uncommitted trounces Biden in the Dearborn presidential primary. The uncommitted vote in Dearborn won 57 percent support, while Biden received 40 percent, according to the unofficial tally of every precinct in Dearborn posted on the city clerk's website. It marks a nearly 17 point loss for Biden in the city's primary. In total, 11,340 uh, Dearborn voters participated in the Democratic presidential primary with 4,526 voting for Biden and 6,432 selecting uncommitted. Biden also suffered electoral blows in other cities with significant Arab American and Muslim communities. Biden also lost to uncommitted and a ham tramp where 828 uncommitted votes accounted for 61 percent of the total vote share in the city's Democratic presidential primary, according to unofficial results. 
In Dearborn Heights, a plurality but not a majority of voters picked uncommitted over Biden, according to the unofficial tally. All right, we'll get to that uh, in a second. But, you know, the other obstacle that the uncommitted vote faced and why, you know, you could imagine why uh, the disaffection with Biden is going to actually be greater than even this uncommitted campaign would have you think is that the people who are inclined to vote uncommitted are also probably less inclined to vote at all. Right. Yes. You're not going to exactly. hire a babysitter so right. you can go and vote uncommitted. <laughs> right. Right? right. And so, you know, it's a vote of no confidence. Voters of no confidence are less likely to vote at all. And Dearborn is a fairly large population center. The fact that only a little over 10,000 people showed up at all, that in alone is a horrible sign for Joe Biden. But obviously the center of this uncommitted campaign was the Arab and Muslim community. And here's Nina Turner trying to get a word in edgewise on CNN about why this might be happening to Joe Biden. But uh, Anderson Cooper led a panel wide panic to try and shut that down as desperately as possible. So here's CNN. They are in fact suffering. And I am young enough to remember colleagues when Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and also Congresswoman Cori Bush called for a ceasefire very early on, they were called abhorrent. Now fast forward to all of these bodies laying in the wake and people who are living through this every single day. So, by the way, there's also been slaughter in, in Israel. I was going to well. say, so, yeah, 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 yeah. No, a I lot of pain on both sides. No, quiet, I'm quiet, not, quiet. I'm yeah, not, shut up. I'm sure on the problem, no, but I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the the politics of this tonight. How, what to you would be a victory? As somebody was calling yeah. for this uncommitted vote, what to you would be a victory tonight? Uh, to get that message across. I'm not denying that pain. All I'm saying that at a certain point after October the 7th, it becomes clear. I mean, you have a right wing prime minister. Right. We don't need to debate the issue. No, we don't need to debate the issue. No, 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 no. Anybody's pain. What All I'm right, fine. Yes, yes, we know. People are dying. The president and our country has the power to say to Netanyahu, we need a permanent ceasefire. The only Within time hostages. Reason, though, if I can only, push back wait, I, one more point. The only time <laughs> hostages <laughs> were released oh my God. is when we had that brief ceasefire. That is another reason I, I why. Mean, I, I, I mean, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop, stop. Show it. Like they ask her to give her analysis. And then when she starts explaining why there's a big uncommitted vote, especially centered in the Arab and Muslim areas, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, right wing and whatever. We, we don't have to talk about the issue. Well, that's that's the answer. Like, right. that's the answer you're right. looking for. Right. Like she can't explain they, they, well, this well, without getting into that. Right. They they want her to play the reindeer games. She, right. They want her to do the kind of Claire McCaskill, which from Hansel and Gretel come into my gingerbread house of superficial horse race analysis. And um, look, I mean, none of us are really happy with Nina Turner at this point, I don't think. Uh, but she's still not what they are. Right. She she's she's still not prepared to go full Donna Brazile on CNN, right? And just just stay within those very narrowly prescribed lines that is their only comfort zone and the only comfort zone of their audience. Like if you if you look at the running theme here, and we'll see this with the with the clip you pulled about the Trump trial. Um, if you wonder why every lib you talk to is so so misinformed this is why it, it's it's quite remarkable some of the clips that we've pulled today how it, it almost seems like it's gotten worse like they've really given up trying to inform their viewers it seems like the imperative at this point has just become 100 percent to create a commercial news-like product that appeals to the few remaining people who watch this shit for entertainment right. and mistake it for ac actual journalism because they're, you know, just, it seems like they feel their purpose is to tell their viewers, no, 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 none of this means anything. No, none of it's important. No, yeah, it don't worry. Don't worry. You'll be okay. Don't worry. We're here no, to give you the good news. We're your shoulder to cry on. That, that, right, right. And, and this is why you talk to a lib. 
and they all just repeat whatever the talking points are. No, 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 but this is very common. It's very common. It's, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it really doesn't mean anything. Actually, it probably, <laughs> it should have been a lot higher if people really can't, because that, 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 that's, that's what they fucking hear. And we're well, gonna, let's we're get into sit. that right now, actually, because I have some exhibits that relate to that exactly. So you hear what Jennifer, Jennifer Pondy, every said about it. She's been in politics a very long time, you yeah. know. So here's Jennifer Palmieri, who was the Clinton advisor in 2016, who's forecasting you should really take very seriously when it comes to these things here. Oh, yeah. Some historical context from Detroit News. And so they show the history of the uncommitted vote for Democrats. So as you can see, in 2008, 40 percent voted uncommitted. Now, there was no incumbent in 2008. Hillary Clinton was running against Barack Obama. Obama, through some technicality, failed to qualify for the ballot. And so the uncommitted vote was really a right. vote for Barack Obama. So that's why right. that was really right. high. Now, the other thing a lot of people are pointing to here is 20. 12, where uncommitted got about 10% of the vote. First of all, maybe if you're Jennifer Palmieri and you're advising the Hillary Clinton campaign in 2016, you would have liked to look at that data point and notice that there were some vulnerabilities for Democrats post financial crisis and post bailout in the home of Ford. Right now, Barack Obama happened to be lucky enough that year to run against a candidate whose, you know, signature op ed was entitled Let Detroit Go Bankrupt. So he survived yeah. that. Yeah. But that was an early warning sign that there maybe was some discontent with Barack Obama and the Democratic Party in Michigan, which could have come in handy in the 2016 campaign. But second of all, and most importantly, 10% voted uncommitted in 2012. It was a much, much, much lower turnout in 2012. And so the raw vote for uncommitted, as you could see, 20,833 people voted uncommitted in 2012. So really, in terms of raw vote, this was five times worse than the 2012 primary. Five times worse. Just because as a percentage, it was roughly the same. You had 100,000 vote uncommitted this time and only 20,000 vote <laughs> uncommitted in 2012. Now, 20,000 was far less than Obama's eventual margin of victory. That was partly because of who he was running in opposition to, Mitt Romney. Uh, but also, it's you, you, just, could, you couldn't have picked a better person. You couldn't have picked against. a better person to run against. But also in a state like Michigan, it's just very unlikely, especially a state that leaned blue at that time, that 20,000 votes was going to be the difference. It's quite likely that 100,000 votes is going to be well uh, outside, uh, m far larger than Biden's margin of victory in the state if he wins a victory in the state, which as of now, polling has him down about an average of five points in the state. So to try and put this graphic up and say, well, look, 40 percent voted uncommitted in 2008. Wrong. That was an Obama vote in 2008. And then in 2012, 10 percent. Yeah, 10 percent, but five times fewer people, right. <laughs> five times fewer right. people. And then right. if you look, 2016, 2020, those numbers are microscopic. So there's no real way to spin this into good news for Joe Biden. But Nate Silver will give it the old college try. Uncommitted didn't do well by any reasonable benchmark in Michigan. Not sure why people are trying to spin this into a story. If anything, a little bullish for Biden insofar as it suggests that the protest vote over Gaza might not be all that large. Talk about a guy who had all the credibility in the world after the 2012 yeah, race, oddly fire. enough. Just lit it on fire by becoming a total opinion hack. Nate Silver, in that 2012 race, called every single state. Not only did he call every single state, he was uncannily accurate in terms of the margins in the major swing states. He wrote a big book after that. He was the biggest political star right. in the world. Oh, Nate right. Silver, this guy's got it. You know, look to him. And then he took that. He read his own press and he became a partisan hack. And now he's a joke. Now nobody looks to him for anything anymore except bullshit takes like this based on what is ultimately a very deceptive headline that is designed to, as Russell said, just put the lib's mind at ease. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry. It's all going to be OK. That's the purpose that this media serves, ultimately. Well, and, and we're going to see in the clip we play later, 
when you wonder why people didn't see any alarm bells in the Trump Hillary race, it's because of these people, none of whom lost their jobs. They're fucking telling their they're telling their voters that Biden uh, you no, know, well Biden will get reelected. I, yeah. I was actually I was stunned to hear them <laughs> saying that. Every poll says the opposite. Yeah. What are you what are you talking about? There's absolutely nothing to support that. And and they say it like, well, no, no, of course. No, and you then, had Rob and Reiner then, tweet out this morning, uh, either this morning or late last night. President Biden will win the popular vote by seven to ten million votes. It's a question of whether people in these key swing states turn out. What world are you living in where he's projected to win the popular vote by seven to ten right, million votes? He's right. losing in the average of general right. national polls. And I, I remember after 2012, there was a lot of glee among the liberals and a lot of, uh, you know, false friend kind of signaling. Yes, well, Republican voters have been very badly served by their media because they should have known Mitt Romney was going to lose. Morning Joe did a whole monologue that went viral about that, about how the how the how the media, the conservative media has really misled. Uh, oh, okay. Well, so what are you doing now? What are right, you all you're doing, doing the same now? Thing. You're you're telling people you're pumping them up that Joe Biden's going to be reelected? Are you kidding? Well, uh, yeah, no. So they're doing the same thing that they accused the Republican media of doing in 2012. Number one, number two, they are right. The Republican media did pump up sure. the base with false hope in 2012 sure. and the republican base learned from that the next time that's why they nominated trump the next time despite the republican media warning that trump couldn't win but they're right. like fuck you they you told, told us go, romney go was a lock and he box. got his ass right. kicked right so right. fuck you we're not going to believe you anymore the democrats right. will never do that they'll never they cross never, msnbc they'll never no matter what no. right exactly no 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 they're going to tell them biden's going to get reelected, and when he doesn't you know they'll put they'll send out Joy Reid to talk about racist voters and you know we were right but we undercounted the racists. We we <laughs> exactly we underestimated how how profoundly racist the country actually. There is, is a sleeping giant of white nationalism in this country yeah. that we were unfortunately we're sorry to say we just had more faith in America than this and we share in all of your shock and despair and disappointment. That's how they'll do it on election yeah. night if it goes sideways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Please clap. Yeah.